So there have been a lot of questions being asked about technical information about what is the screen brand, what is the screen model number, all those kind of things I will try to answer here in this particular video. People are also asking about the buyer, so we'll try and show you the buyer settings. Now I mentioned that it's locked down, so you can't go in there and tweak and adjust like you can on some of the Chinese tablets that I test out. But what you can do is you can boot from the BIOS and other things like that. You can change the boot order as well, I think so. But I will go and have a look on that later on in this particular clip here. So a lot of questions have come about, I've had a few messages and whatnot on the forum too. It's people asking about uh, the monitor. What monitor is it using? What 1080p screen is it? Well, all that information I'm going to lay out here in front of you. Now, because the text is so tiny on this and I'm using a capture card, it may pay to put this in full screen if you are watching this windowed. It will definitely help full screen. So if I scroll down here, this is the monitor. So it's a BOE, unknown monitor model. Google it, search it on the internet, you'll be able to find out the information. Now I haven't actually measured the the output brightness of it, but it is very bright. So I imagine somewhere around, I can't really say, 350 nits. I will measure that later on and check that out. So the Samsung drive, I've already opened it up now. There's a video, if you haven't seen it, me opening that up. You can replace the SSD. It's a little hard to get the back case off, but it is possible. And you can insert a PCIe. I'm trying to figure out whether it's a PCIe Gen 2 or Generation 3. Hopefully someone knows that can let me know. And I can add a second drive in there and test that out. So it's a Samsung. This is the stock one they use. Set of three speeds. Nothing amazing. Uh, the Intel wireless card is there as well. So the Intel 8260 tri-band, it performs really, really well too, actually. I got some of the best speeds ever that I have seen out of a 4G connection because my connection here where I am located, uh, landlines, ADSL just arrives absolute crap. I get like one megabit per second. So I have to use 4G, it's very expensive. But these speeds here are really good, especially if you're someone like me with YouTube, you can upload relatively fast, large 4K files there. But that speed, Phenomenal, really good. I've never got that kind of score before, but okay, it was, it was one o'clock in the morning that I was still messing about with this. So I don't really think there is much more to show here. People asking also about the battery life. Someone uh, told me that they just saw a review that said you can get nine hours all day battery life. Well, I, I don't know where that review is coming from, but that, maybe there's something wrong with my unit, but I doubt it. I've never had a core in that's getting nine hours. It depends what your use is. If you're sitting there watching, what were they, looping a, a black video all day or something on 0% brightness? No, seriously, four and a half hours is my current usage when I use Edge, and, and that is the best you can do. My current screen brightness, that's at 25%. Okay, they are reading the gauge from Windows, which is rubbish. It never comes out to be like nine hours, 36 minutes. That's where they're getting, obviously, their information from, not actually testing it out. Like, so far, I have... I'm being watching. So there you can see four and a half hours. That's that's a worst case scenario, really. That's okay. You can get a lot better than that because I could put on the screen power saving mode, but I'm not using it at the moment with Intel. And if you watch a 1080p clip, for example, you lose. I think it was for like an hour watching an hour video, you're going to lose around 15% battery life. I think it was. Something like that. So I still need to get into more details because I've been benchmarking running games and all this. I haven't had a steady kind of what I would call normal use to gauge the battery life there. So nothing, yeah, there's nothing really else here. If you want to see more information on the Core M, well, that's already up there. Uh, the memory speeds, you can see that right down there. Uh, memory timings, yes, it is dual channel, definitely dual channel. And it is running at 1866, which it should, which is the fastest speed. So that's all fine there. So what I'm going to do now is try and show you some of the BIOS people have been asking about that because they want to install or boot to devices and install Linux or Remix. So have a look at that now. All right, so here is the UEFI BIOS that we have set up. And you can see that very basic what they're actually giving you here. So you've got the main, it's just listing all the system information. We have security, so you can set up passwords, a BIOS passport. I think you can uh, password even set up a boot password, secure boot, enable, disable, clear that. Uh, standard things in there. So a lot of people are asking about the, the boot, which I'll get to in just a second. So power, you can change only three settings there. Now what I mean by lockdown is other BIOSes from Core M 
devices I've been looking at, like the Cube i7 book, for example, I could go in there and I could mess around with everything. I could underclock, I could change RAM timings, I could do all sorts of crazy things that would get a lot of people into trouble. So this is probably why Xiaomi has done this. So the boot here we have, okay, boot mode, you can change it to legacy. Uh, I don't want to mess around with that. And we also have USB boot enabled, boot device order. So I'm hoping that if we do install a secondary drive, that you can swap between it, because if we can take advantage of a full PCIe SSD, something that's a lot faster than SATA 3, then it will be really good to be able to change the boot order and to be able to boot to that device. So I'm going to do a quick test here. I have uh, a Acronis backup boot disk in the USB uh, 3 port there. What I'm going to do is do a reset, see if I can boot to it, and later on I will try and test out Linux, but honestly I don't have a lot of time at the moment. I've just got so many devices to look at. So we'll do that now, and we'll see what happens. Okay, so plugging that in and then doing the reboot. By the way, F2 on boot is what gets you into the BIOS. Not escape, not delete. So here we have my USB device there that I can, yes, use this to boot. So I imagine that, yeah, we're going to be able to install Linux. It's safe to say you can boot from external devices there. So that at least is working. That's one good thing. At least they did not lock us out of that. So that's the video there. I'll be back with more. I'll be testing out some gaming soon. So there'll be a gaming video and I am working towards my full review. But so far, this is looking like quite a good machine. Okay, it's not perfect. It's got some minor flaws there. You can't control the backlighting. It's only one level. The other thing is, you know, there's no micro SD card slot. There's no touch screen. But I mean, for the price, I don't think it's bad at all. And as always, thank you for watching this video. Hopefully we'll see you soon.